Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here doing a mini review and a demo using the Natasha Denona Lila palette. Just a couple of disclaimers, for the most part my channel will be about using uh, products I already own and dedicating my channel to panning things. And, but uh, every now and then I will buy a new product and demo and review it here. To get started with the review, uh, the packaging is very standard to some of Natasha's uh, bigger palettes. I own her purple blue 28 pan palette and the packaging opens very, it's the same thing, opens like a book like this with magnetic closures that keep the palette secure. You are getting a very big mirror in this palette, which I like. I still keep the plastic on mine because I'm weird and like to keep my palette, my mirror palette clean. Um, you are getting this plastic sheet that has the names on it. I don't really care for this plastic sheet, but it's sort of a catch-22 with me because I want to keep it on there so I know what the shades are. But I don't know. I just wish that it was printed on the palette rather than on a sheet of paper or a sheet of plastic. In this palette, you were getting 15 shades and each shade is 2.5 grams of product. And to put that in perspective, that is just a little bit more than the three big base shades in the Kat, and Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. So with each one of these squares is equivalent to each one of these top three big squares in this palette. The palette retails for about $130. Um, I don't have any shipping information. I received this as a birthday gift, so I don't know shipping and any of that, but I know that who purchased it for me got it off Sephora. Because you are getting 15 shades in this palette, each shadow retails for about $8.66. In this palette, you are getting four mattes. You're getting Per Se, which is a matte. You're getting Amra, which is a matte. You're getting Nude Vino and Nude Mauve, which are also mattes. The rest of the shades contain glitter and shimmer, and you get three duochromes. Duochromes in the shade are Vivid, Dragon Bite, and Cyclone. I find that the shades in this palette wear very nicely. Um, they show up very intense on my eyes, but keep in mind that I am using a glitter glue under these shades. Um, these are, they're a little bit chunky, but I find that using a glitter glue with the shimmers works really nicely and I don't get a lot of transfer up into my crease or a whole lot of fallout. Some of these shades don't swatch super well with a brush. Um, as a recommendation for Stephanie and Nicole, she recommended buying these sponge tip applicators. I don't really care to use these on my eyes. Um, I just don't, personal preference. I find that just using some Fix Plus or some glitter glue with a regular brush works really well. Um, these could probably be used really well for being precise, maybe getting really into that inner corner. It's just personal preference. I don't really care to use these say swatching with this sponge tip applicator does work a lot better than a brush swatch for instance for instance if I go into this pink shade here I think this one's called I can't remember what this one's called at the top of my head but it doesn't swatch very well on a brush but I don't have primer on either so that might be part of it but on this sponge tip applicator it swatches very nicely, almost as if I were using my finger. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the demo. First things first, I'm using Urban Decay's Anti-Aging Primer Potion all over my lid. Next, I'm going in with my Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye and using this shade right here. I'm taking that shade and using it to set my primer and you use it as an all over blending base did forget to mention was as much as I really like this Lila palette I wish it had more mattes that I could use to make complete eye looks rather than having to pull in another palette to create a or to have a base shade for my eyeshadow. Next I'm taking some NYX glitter glue and I'm going to be applying that on my lids.
Before I put any eyeshadow down, I forgot to do a crease color, so I'm going in with my MAC 217, and I'm going to go into the shade, I'm gonna go into the shade Nude Vino. I mentioned this in all my videos, but I like to blend my eyeshadow just a little bit into my brow bone, kind of up, up above my crease a little bit, because my eyes are so deep set that it gets lost. Like when I open my eyes really wide, they are deep set and slightly hooded. So blending that upward helps not lose that crease color. Now that I've got that all blended out, I'm going in with a all over shader brush. This is another one of those It Cosmetics for Ulta brushes. And I'm going in with the shade Juno as my all over lid color. Next, I'm taking a small shader brush and I'm going to go into the shade Helio right here. And with Helio, I'm taking it on my center of my lid and bringing it out to my outer corner. I'm gonna go in with my ring finger and go into the shade Livid and just stamp it on my outer corners of my eye. I'm usually not a big fan of doing eyeshadow with my fingers, but sometimes little soft stamps of color call for it. And these eyeshadows do apply. I mean, I think they apply okay with the finger. I, I just don't like to do it. But these ones, I don't really have a whole lot of trouble applying with my finger. I'm going back with just a little bit of Helio to blend these two colors together on that seam shader brush I used before. Just blend out any harsh lines and keep that ombre effect. What I'm going to do next is take a fluffy brush and dip it into this purple shade Amethyst real lightly because the shade is very pigmented. Just tap it on and then I'm going to gently go into the crease Next, I'm going in with my Marc Jacobs eyeliner, and this is the shade Irony. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm uh, just going to end it here because I don't really wear a lot of face makeup. I don't really wear a lot of lipstick, um, brows. There's really nothing special there. I just sort of fill them in. I don't really draw them on. I'm really pretty boring with my brows. I usually try to just make my eyes the star of the show, but overall, I, I really do enjoy this palette. I think the shadows, um, they can be a little bit hard to layer, but it's not impossible to work with them. The shimmers are beautiful. They have a nice wet sort of glossy look to them which I personally like. Um, I find that the mattes are pretty easy to blend. Everything is very pigmented. You're getting a ton of product in each little eyeshadow square. Um, and overall, I, I just really enjoy this palette. I've used almost, I want to say, as of now, I've used probably half the shades and haven't had a whole lot of issues with them. Um, I would like to dig into these duochromes and do a, do a palette series using some of these really pretty, maybe y'all can see that better, using some of these really pretty duochromes. I do really enjoy this palette. The only thing I wish was there were more mattes that I could do a base shade with so I didn't have to pull in another palette. I, could, I usually like palettes that I can just use one palette and not have to bring in a whole bunch of other shades to complete a look. It's a little bit easier to travel with a one and done type palette. I really do want to do a uh, palette series on my channel using this palette. 
and kind of dip into some of these more bold colors like this brick and this gold. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. Until next time, guys.